Today is Monday, August 28th. What to know about a racist shooting rampage in Florida, where the shooter first tried to go before security sent him running. And three major weather events to tell you about, a hurricane on the way, tornadoes that already hit, and an update on the record-breaking heat still hovering. Also, a kiss seen around the world is now leading to calls for a top official to step down. Plus, 60 years since the iconic I Have a Dream speech, the exact age where Americans apparently make their best financial decisions. And Simone Biles sets a new record again. Those stories and more next. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. Unfortunately, we have to start today by telling you about a shooting. Authorities say it was a racist killing in Jacksonville, Florida. The local sheriff says the shooter was a 21-year-old white man wearing tactical gear and carrying a handgun and assault-style rifle with swastikas on it. He shot and killed two black men and a black woman at a Dollar General store. He also apparently chased several other people as they ran off through the back of the store and fired at them, but missed. Eventually, the shooter turned the gun on himself. Officials say the gunman actually started out at the historically black Edward Waters University, but he started putting on his tactical gear in a back parking lot, and he quickly got the attention of campus security. Then when a security officer approached him, he drove off and went to the Dollar General nearby. The sheriff says the man authored manifestos declaring his hate for the black race and its intentions to kill them. Authorities say they read like the, quote, diary of a madman. And in the past, he had been involuntarily committed to a mental hospital. But he did not have a criminal record and was able to buy his guns legally. Last night, hundreds of people showed up to a prayer vigil honoring the people who died. Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis addressed the crowd, though he was loudly booed this time. DeSantis says he's going to be announcing more financial support for security at Edward Waters University. A routine military exercise ended in tragedy over the weekend. An aircraft that was transporting troops crashed off the coast of northern Australia yesterday, and three U.S. Marines were killed. Five others were seriously hurt and rushed to the hospital. It comes as the U.S. and Australia have been stepping up military cooperation in the face of tensions with China in the Indo-Pacific region. The aircraft that crashed has actually come under some scrutiny in the wake of several deadly crashes involving U.S. Marines in recent years. Though for now, it's not clear what caused this latest crash. It is under investigation. In Greece, firefighters are battling the largest wildfires ever recorded in the European Union. There are more than 600 fire crews from around Europe, backed by a fleet of water-dropping planes and helicopters. Still, at least 21 people have died in the fires. Hundreds of miles of homes and forests have been destroyed, and the fires are still considered out of control. Over the weekend, police arrested nearly 80 people for arson, though the fires are still under investigation. Well, back in the U.S., Florida's Gulf Coast is bracing for a hurricane. Tropical Storm Idalia is expected to strengthen into a Category 2 hurricane before it makes landfall, probably Wednesday morning, with winds of up to 100 miles an hour. Then it could bring heavy rainfall and flash flooding to parts of Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis declared a state of emergency for 33 counties along the Gulf Coast. Some areas north of Tampa are already under voluntary evacuation orders. More than 1,100 National Guardsmen have been mobilized in Florida, along with thousands of high-water vehicles and aircraft. And power companies say they're going to start staging personnel today. Meanwhile, while one part of the country is preparing for severe weather, another is cleaning up. Storms brought at least seven tornadoes, heavy rain, and high winds to Michigan. And sadly, at least five people died there. The storm also spawned at least four tornadoes in Ohio. No one was reported hurt there, but several buildings were severely damaged. And the other big weather story we've been following, of course, is the brutal heat that's been lingering over the middle of the country. NOAA says more than 3,600 daily high temperature records and nearly 5,000 daily high minimum temperature records have been broken over the last month. And hundreds of those happened in the last week, many in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Though there's actually a slight cooling trend moving over that part of the country now. The heat dome that's been over Texas since June is now moving out finally giving people temperatures in the mid-90s instead of 100s or even 110s. That said, the triple-digit heat is expected to return by the end of the week, so people are being told to embrace the seasonally normal temps now while they last. More news is coming up, but first, a quick break for our sponsor, Miracle Made. 
We've been talking about the hot temperatures outside around the country lately. But how's your temperature while you sleep? Your temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep quality. And I know, I do not like that feeling of waking up hot and sticky in the middle of the night. And that's why I'm really enjoying my Miracle Made sheets. Using silver infused fabrics inspired by NASA, Miracle Made sheets are thermoregulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long. Go to trymiracle.com slash newsworthy to try Miracle Made sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use the promo code newsworthy at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product. It's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash newsworthy and use the code newsworthy to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash newsworthy to treat yourself. Exactly 60 years ago today, an estimated 250,000 people gathered at the Lincoln Memorial for the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. It's still considered one of the most consequential racial justice and equality demonstrations in American history. And on that same day, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. gave his now iconic I Have a Dream speech that's credited for paving the way for the landmark 1964 Civil Rights Act. Well, over the weekend, tens of thousands of people gathered in that same spot. They listened to modern civil rights activists, including members of the King family who say MLK's dream is now in jeopardy. Over five hours, they called for an end to hate and bigotry in all forms. And today, President Biden and Vice President Harris will meet with organizers of the original 1963 gathering to observe the anniversary. The world is saying goodbye to a game show icon. Bob Barker died at 99 years old. Besides being the longtime host of The Price is Right, Barker was MC of the Miss America and Miss Universe pageants for 20 years. He was also the longtime host of the New Year's Day Tournament of Roses Parade, and Barker was known as a dedicated animal rights activist. The new host of The Price is Right, Drew Carey, wrote about his predecessor on X over the weekend. He said, quote, very sad day for The Price is Right family and animal lovers all over the world. There hasn't been a day on set that I didn't think of Bob Barker and thank him. I will carry his memory in my heart forever. More tributes came in from Adam Sandler, Vanna White, Howie Mandel, and more. And fans placed flowers on his Hollywood Walk of Fame star. Thousands of American auto workers could be going on strike soon. The United Auto Workers Union represents employees at the big three legacy companies, General Motors, Ford, and Stellantis. The UAW has been in contract negotiations with the automakers, but so far they seem to be at a standstill. So over the weekend, union members overwhelmingly voted in support of a strike if there's no deal by the time the current contract expires next month. That doesn't necessarily mean a strike will be called, but the union now has the right to call one if it sees fit. The UAW is demanding 46% pay raises, more paid time off, increased retiree benefits, and more. The automakers say they're still committed to reaching a deal that's fair to workers and gives the companies some flexibility, especially as the industry shifts to electric models that have fewer parts and require less labor. If a strike does happen, Bloomberg says there will be ripple effects up and down the auto supply chain, and it could mean near-record car prices will go up too. At this point, analysts say there's about a 50% chance of a strike, so stay tuned. A controversial kiss has now sidelined a top soccer official in Spain. FIFA suspended the Spanish Soccer Federation chief, Luis Rubiales, for 90 days pending a full investigation. This all goes back to the medal and trophy presentation that happened after Spain's first Women's World Cup win. Rubiales can be seen on video grabbing a player's head and kissing her on the lips. That player called it a, quote, impulsive, macho act that was out of place and without any consent from me. Several members of the coaching staff resigned in protest of his conduct. And all 23 players on the national team said they would not play again under current leadership. But Rubiales has refused to resign, saying his critics are just trying to take him down with what he called false feminism. And he says the kiss was consensual. So soccer's governing body, FIFA, suspended him, and Spain's government sued him, saying he violated the country's sports laws. Now Spain's Soccer Federation has a meeting scheduled for today to talk about what to do next. To be continued. Simone Biles is living up to her nickname as the GOAT, a.k.a. the greatest of all time. She won the all-around title at the U.S. Gymnastics National Championships, making her the first gymnast to ever win eight titles in her career. At 26 years old, she also became the oldest woman to ever win the championships, made even more special by the fact that she won her first at just 16. Now her coach says she's at her best. Next up comes the World Championships next month. 
Just a couple more sports updates. PGA golf season wrapped up over the weekend. In the Tour Championship, Norwegian golfer Victor Hovland won the FedEx Cup along with the $18 million bonus. And in tennis, the final Grand Slam tournament kicks off today. We're talking about the U.S. Open. The tournament runs through September 10th. That's it for the main news, so now it's time for Money Monday, when we talk about one interesting money-related news story. But first, support for today's episode comes from Lumi Deodorant. I am so excited to tell you about it because it's my favorite new deodorant. Again, it's called Lumi, and it's a uniquely formulated pH-balanced deodorant. It's aluminum-free, paraben-free, skin-safe, and clinically proven to control odor for up to 72 hours. In fact, while I mostly use it for my underarms, it is a whole body deodorant if you want it, the first of its kind. So that means it's seriously safe to use anywhere on your body, pits, feet, belly buttons, and beyond. The truth is the deodorants that I've loved in the past just were not working for me anymore, so I needed something new. And I found it. Unlike some deodorants that try to mask odor with a fragrance, Lumi is formulated and powered by mandelic acid to stop odor before it starts. Lumi's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like mini body wash and deodorant wipes that are both perfect for on the go, and free shipping. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with the code NEWSWORTHY at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit lumideodorant.com and use the code NEWSWORTHY. That's lumi, L-U-M-E, deodorant.com with the code NEWSWORTHY. Okay, now back to Money Monday. So at what age do you think you did or will make the best financial decisions? A new report in the Wall Street Journal says there is an exact age, a time that combines accumulated knowledge and experience about money, spending, and saving— but it's before you start to lose key analytic cognitive skills. And that age is, on average, 53 and 54. One study from last year found the ability to understand financial information and actually apply it to your life and personal finances peaks at 54 and then starts to decline. And the journal cites economic researchers who found people make the fewest financial mistakes at age 53. Plus, a 2009 study in the Brookings Papers on Economic Activity found that fees and interest payments across a variety of areas are at their lowest levels, around 53, too. Experts say knowing this info about your 50s can help because young people can educate themselves more to try to make up for the lack of experience, while older people can work to keep their mind and analytical skills sharp. All right, thank you so much for joining us and listening today and every day. We'll be back with much more news to know tomorrow. For now, have a great day.